the Green Bay Packers, perhaps the greatest story in the history of sports. For over 100 years, this franchise has collected 13 world championships thanks to an incredible collection of players, coaches, and team executives. 162 names had been given the honor of induction into the Packers Hall of Fame. But this week's ceremony, number 50 in its history, placed two new members in the ranks of Packer greats. They are two of this century's greatest defensive backs, Al Harris and Charles Woodson. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Total Packers Hall of Fame special. I'm Larry McCarron. Al Harris and Charles Woodson, two, no doubt about it, Packer Hall of Famers, and interestingly enough, two players who started their careers with other teams. Al coming to the Packers in a trade from Philly, and Charles coming to Green Bay after eight years with the Oakland Raiders. Charles Woodson, first ballot Pro Football Hall of Famer. What role did your time in Green Bay play in that? It played a big role. Coming here, being able to play with the teammates that I played with, you know, those were the guys that helped me reach new heights. And, and I think without playing with those guys and us pushing each other, I don't know if I get to the first ballot. We really made each other excel and, and be the best that we could be. Throws the left side deep, it's intercepted. intercepted. Charles Woodson. You were a hybrid before there was hybrids. You think you were somewhat of a pioneer because nobody was doing it and you did it and now everybody's still looking for that guy but can't find him. Yeah. A pioneer in terms of a guy who could do all of those things, but do it at a Pro Bowl level. You could put me anywhere, and, and, and wherever you put me, you know, I was going to be able you know, to succeed. So I've always looked at myself as a football player. A lot of what you accomplished was with violence. Did that part of your game come quite naturally? It did, and I think it started early. You know, I, I, I feel like I had a great understanding of what football was all about. And you know what it's about? It's about having the football. So either you have it on offense or you got to get it back, you know, on defense for your offense. One thing I know about offensive players, whether it be receiver or running back or quarterback, they're not trying to go back to the sideline without the football. So if I can just, you know, you know loosen it up a little bit and make them really think about it, then I have them. Charles, you not only made big plays, you made them at big times. What's the secret to doing that? I think just really just understanding the game. I think if you have a, you know, a genuine understanding of the game, you know, you'll, you'll make a lot of plays. Palmer throws the right side, it's intercepted! My goodness, Charles Woodson! Let's talk about the NFC Championship game after the 2010 season, Soldier Field. Let's be one mind, let's be one heartbeat, for one purpose, one goal, for one more game. One. Let's get it. What did that mean to you? I've been in the NFL for you know, quite a while up to that point. I'd been to a Super Bowl. I always felt like I'd go right back, and uh, it, it didn't happen that way. There's no guarantee that you'll get back. And so I just wanted the guys to think about it, like for that next couple of weeks, like you have something that you're able to accomplish that will last forever. Charles, the Super Bowl that followed, unfortunately, right before the half, you break your collarbone. And at halftime, you find out the news is not good. What would you say to the team then? <laughs> Man, I think about it all the time because I'm sitting there and uh, the doctors had, they had, saw, they had seen the x-ray and then they, they just left. It, took, it seemed like forever. So I walk around the corner, I see the x-ray myself. It's sitting there and I saw my collarbone. I was like, oh man, I cannot play. Like I know I can't play because of the way my bone was looking. Mike calls the team together. He starts to talk and I say, Mike, you know, can I, you know, say a few words? And, um, you know, my intentions were to kind of really, really give the guys, you know, a talk, but 
I was really overwhelmed with emotions. And uh, the only thing that came out was, you know, you guys, you know how much, you know, this means to me, how much I want a championship. Go out there and get it done. And then from there, you know, I just, you know, tears, you know, continued to flow and, and that was it, man. And, um, you know, when I think about it, they, they did the task. Going into the Packers Hall of Fame with Al Harris, is that pretty special for you? That's the way it has to be. That's the way it has to be. I remember coming here and, uh, you know, Lionel Washington was uh, the DB coach and I remember Lionel saying, hey Charles, man, I just want you to know, man, Al ain't gonna let you outwork him. That was the challenge. From that time on, you know, whenever we went out to practice, you know, there was competition, of course, with us in the offense, but me and Al were competing against each other, you know, trying to be the best corner on the field. Al was a technician on the football field, uh, much more of a technician, you know, than I was. And all it did was elevate me as well. Throws the right side, oh intercepted Woodson, had a leaping grab of the 25. Charles Woodson! Bottom line, after all, you're in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. What does going into the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame mean to Charles Woodson? I mean, it means just as much. It's the Hall of Fame. I, like, I don't care what Hall of Fame you're in. That means, you know, you've done something well. You know, I, I cherish, you know, each and every honor that I've had playing this game of football, whether it's Hall of Fame or Player of the Year or Pro Bowl or whatever it is, you've had to do something right. You, you had to have um, the ability to sustain, you know, excellence over a period of time. So I put it right up there with it. It's all the Hall of Fame. Charles was like having a Reggie White in the back end. That's the kind of impact he had. When opponents game plan for the Packer defense, they started by trying to account for Charles Woodson. Coming up, Charles takes the mic and delivers as you'd expect. Plus, we sit down with the second member of this year's Hall of Fame class, the great Al Harris. The 52-yard interception return in the wild card playoff game against the Seattle Seahawks. What's the backstory to that? The defense that was called, there was only two options. So it was either hitch or slant. It, everything just lined up. The stars just lined up. On the ball, we're going to score. Well, I'll tell you what, if I'm a Packer defender, I may take umbrage with that statement. Yeah, you know I'm a beast. Takes the snap, short drop, quick throw, left side. Yes, yes. Welcome back to the Total Packers Hall of Fame special. If you look up lean and mean in the dictionary, you'll probably see a picture of Al Harris. In all my years around the game, I've never seen a corner who could rough up a wide receiver like Al could. that physical, aggressive, in-your-face style of play. Where'd that come from? Um, that's just, you know, how I've always played since I started playing the position. They're like, all right, get on up there. And I uh, kind of adapted it and, um, you know, put my own little spin to it. You know, just mastering my movements and the things that I have to do to win the down. You know, Al, you came up the hard way. Sixth rounder, practice squad, all that good stuff. Did coming up the hard way influence your game at all? Yes, yes. I always kept a chip on my shoulder. Um, I, you know, went to smaller school, um, so I always thought, oh, you know, I'm just as good as the guys that are going in the first round. So I just always had a chip, you know, just to prove, you know, I belong here. If you ask any Packer fan. What's their favorite Al Harris play? 
it would be the 52-yard interception return in the wild card playoff game against the Seattle Seahawks. What's the backstory to that? What were you thinking at the time? Were you baiting it? Were you ready for it? Um, no, I uh, really wasn't baiting it. Um, thing is, is uh, for that particular situation and the defense that was called, there was only two options. So it was either hitch or slant, which we had worked that week in practice. So um, yeah, everything just lined up. The stars just lined up. Quick throw, left side. Yeah. Yeah. In 04, you registered 28 passes defensed, a Green Bay Packer record. Now, to put that number in perspective, Al, last year, All-Pro Jair Alexander had 15. How on earth did you manage to get 28 in one season? Uh, not catching the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, we, we, uh, that was my first year I started matching up, so we are just going where they're throwing the ball at. Playing a lot of man-to-man, -man, you don't get a ton of interceptions, you get more pass breakups. So I kind of embraced that and, um, you know, just did my job. You were a Pro Bowl alternate for like three straight seasons while you were in Green Bay, and then you made it. Was it a really special accomplishment for you considering the path you traveled to get there? Honestly, that was always my goal. You know what I mean? To be an NFL All-Star. You know what I mean? One of the top guys at my position. And I just remember my rookie year, uh, Derrick Brooks wore the shirt that they give you over at the Pro Bowl, wore it every single day. And um, you know, that was just the goal. That was my goal, that was my personal goal. And, uh, that's what I thrive for. What does being inducted into the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame mean to you? It means the world. Um, great honor. Uh, you know, I, I got to admit, you know, first coming here, this probably was the last thing I would be ex expecting. You know what I mean? But um, it, it's a great honor because um, so many fond memories of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Is it special for you going in with your former teammate, Charles Woodson? Yes, that's the icing on the cake. Honestly, um, just from when Wood first got here, um, there was a point in time to where, um, if anybody's been in one of Mike McCarthy's training camps, you know you got some long practices. It's a lot of throwing the ball in the practice. And um, there were times, you know, for a couple of years that we would take every single rep, you know, just going through that, and now to this, you know, just the icing on the cake. When it came time for you to retire, I mean, by the end, you had been with five different organizations, but you took the time and the trouble to officially retire as a Green Bay Packer. And when asked why, you said, Green Bay is a special place to play football. Why was it special for Al Harris? Everything lined up for me. You know, I got to play the wood style of ball that I wanted to play. Got a chance to play for two great coaches. Met a ton of great people. Everything about this place, Green Bay, Wisconsin, was just lined up for me. It's a special place because there's no distractions here. You know, it's all ball and the people are awesome. So this is just, this is football. <laughs> this is football. I want to finish up with something that you said at your retirement about would you miss it and so forth. And he said, when you've emptied your tank, you're at peace with yourself. I emptied my tank. Empty. You sure did, Al Harris, and congratulations. Thank you very much. With his long hair and in your face play style, I always thought Al was a pretty cool customer. Probably too cool for the come early, stay late life of a coach. But that's what he does for the Dallas Cowboys and Mike McCarthy, no less. Thankfully, Mike gave him a couple days off to be inducted into the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame. I'm really just a product, the support system that I had over the years, um, whether it was coaches, friends, family, 
whoever it may be. And a, lo a lot of the relationships and the people that I met here in Green Bay, I still communicate with a lot of those people now today. First off, uh, Coach Sherman, Mike Sherman, my friend, I want to thank you. Um, sending his second round pick to Philadelphia for a third corner. Appreciate you, bro. Really do. I uh, also want to thank my father, um, Johnny Lee Harris. Um, my role model, uh, never wanted to be like any athlete, never wanted to be like any coach, always just wanted to be like my dad. Showed me a great example to take care of your family, son. I remember times we would come home late after working long hours at the, as a police officer, and I would come home, it was sometimes 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. I was like, hey, dad, let's, you know, could you take me to the beach? Need to do some running. Never once, never, not one time, he said, hey, man, I'm tired. I've been at work all day. Uh, times I woke him up, we get right up off the couch, turn the TV off, you ready? Ready? Sometimes we went out there, maybe it was just 15 minutes. Never once said no, Dad, appreciate you, appreciate you. <laughs> Charles Wilson, bro, I appreciate you, appreciate you. Man, it, it was a blessing for you to come here, for us to be in the same secondary. Um, we pushed each other every single day, uh, on, off the field. I, I wasn't big for words, just wanted to work. And Wood wasn't big for telling them what to do. So, <laughs> so you know, we would just have, we would have this thing when we broke the huddle, it was always funny. Um, I was like, all right, I got this guy over here, you go over there, he was like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Really, bro, I appreciate you. Uh, meant a lot to me as a friend, as a colleague, um, and just watching you over the career, man. Appreciate you, congratulations to you and your family. Also, just Packer Nation, man, the fans here in Green Bay, I thank you so much. This is just a special place for football, special place in my heart for me. Um, it's been great. I really enjoy you guys, and I really appreciate you guys. After the break, we relive Charles Woodson's memorable induction speech. It was a little shaky at the start. It don't matter no more. We in the Hall of Fame, right? We are in the Green Bay Packer Hall of Fame. But first, we recognize the other award winners from Thursday's banquet. You're watching the Total Packers Hall of Fame special. Last month, the Pro Football Hall of Fame welcomed in two historic classes of football royalty. At long last, the late, great Bobby Dillon. The Packers' all-time leader in interceptions finally claimed his seat among the legends of the game. The weekend was capped with a no-brainer. One of the greatest defensive players in the history of the game, Charles Woodson. Not only is he a Packers Hall of Famer, he has now taken his rightful place in camp. Be unique, innovative, learn discipline. You own undeniable respect. Love everyone, give everything, never doubt. Build your legends. Thank you. We in the Hall of Fame, baby. Normally, Charles would have been inducted into the Packers Hall of Fame prior to his induction into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but last year was anything but normal. However, his induction into the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame was well worth the wait. It's my privilege to give you this ring and present you with this bronze football as your contributions for the Green Bay Packers and your induction into the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame. First of all, thank you to my family who made it here. You know, thank you, of course, to my mom. I know what y'all thinking. Y'all see my mom, he's gonna sing and he's gonna cry. I'm not gonna do it tonight, y'all. I'm not, I'm not gonna cry tonight. I'm looking out over the crowd and I just wanna have a chance to kind of thank a few people. You know, I'm so happy to see my man, George Kuntz. 
I got here to Green Bay, I signed the deal, and we were at a, a restaurant. There was a table on the other side of it, and there's a guy over there, and I mean, he's talking about me like a dog. I mean, he's, I don't, I can't believe Green Bay signed Charles Woodson, this and that. And I'm sitting there listening to this guy, and I got to a point, I said, you know what? I'm about to go handle this, Koontz. So I stood up, and the way the table was, I had to walk past Koontz. And so I got up, wiped my mouth, walked by him, and he grabbed my arm, and he said, Charles, please, man, don't do it. So George Koontz, you possibly saved my career in Green Bay before it ever got started. Al, you know, every day I came to practice, I had to watch Al. Lionel Washington, he told me when I first got here, he said, Charles, Al is not going to let you outwork him. And that was really my first introduction to Al Harris. Every day we went out, man, and worked as hard as we could. But I worked even harder because Al Harris. So, Al, to your family, man, I thank you, man. I love you, bro. Congratulations to you. It's been a great, great ride. It was a great seven years here. And so, tonight, Let's put it to rest, right? We understand what it was when I got here. We understand that it was a little shaky at the start. It don't matter no more. We in the Hall of Fame, right? Let's talk about what it is now. We are in the Green Bay Packer Hall of Fame. I thank each and every one of you. I love you. Go Pack Go. The Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame is the absolute best of its kind, bar none. And with the induction of Charles Woodson and Al Harris, it just got better. That's our Hall of Fame special. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.